My recent expedition in Antarctica was uh, solo, unsupported and unassisted from the coast of Antarctica to the South Pole. And, uh, you know, Antarctica is one of the world's most hostile environments. The unpredictability, the volatility and the extremes out there. But doing that solo um, on my own requires a, a unique and specialist set of skills and time and a team to develop those skills here in Wales. Um, and the unsupported means that I was carrying everything I needed for that expedition. So the, the, there was there was no food resupplies and, you know, should I break any equipment, there's no assistance with that. Um, and the unassisted means that it's entirely through human power that, that I'm moving from the coast to, to the South Pole, so no kites, no mo 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 motorized vehicles or anything. E the challenges of performing in Antarctica are one thing, you know, temp the coldest temperature I had on this expedition was minus 45 wind chill. It's entirely uphill, <laughs> so from sea level or from the ice, uh, the depth of the ice at sea level to just under 3,000 meters at the South Pole. The, the challenge of skiing into the catabatic winds that come off the polar plateau means basically you're skiing into a headwind the entire expedition. And being unsupported means I'm dragging uh, a sled. My particular sled was around 65 kilos. That's one thing. That's that that in itself is 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 pretty limiting. But that that kind of uh, performing solo really turns a microscope on on your kind of internal dialogue as well. And I think um, staying motivated and disciplined throughout the expedition is hard. I completed the expedition. Uh, in 28 days, which is the second fastest time in history. And kind of to put it into context, the next fastest time after that is 38 days. Um, so we were operating right at, at the top of the game. But in order to do that, it's about maximizing the time skiing and sleeping and minimizing all the other time. So I developed a strategy here in Wales to ski for 16 hours a day in one hour and 10 minute blocks with a five minute break at the end of each block. And I was gonna sleep for 30 minutes halfway through the day and two hours at the end of the day. Having kind of the, the discipline to, to maintain that, that, that strategy when all you wanna do is stop, all you wanna do is, is put a picture tent and get in. And when you're in your sleeping bag, you all you wanna do is stay in it. Um, that's hard and without anyone to kind of bounce off or to kind of G you up when you're down. But probably one of the, the hardest challenges performing solo is managing that internal dialogue. You know, we, we, all, we all have an internal dialogue in our normal lives, that kind of voice, the bad voice, that kind of tells you to uh, just, just press snooze on the alarm, you know, or, or do you know what, if just, just give up, just don't do that, stop doing that, or you're not good enough to do that, or you can't do that, or, we all have that voice um, and it's kind of one thing managing it here and it can be really tough to manage it here in the normal world but when you're out there and you're on your own and it's minus 45 and the wind's literally burning your skin because it's so cold um, I've still got some frost damage on my face like that's that voice becomes really loud <laughs> and the other voice can get quite quiet at times uh, and that that is probably the hardest mental and emotional side to, to this particular type of expedition there was one particular phase of, of this of this expedition when I got hit with with a particularly cruel and and harsh kind of weather front that came in and at this point I had been ahead of the world record at this point I was on the world record pace and I had skied about seven, roughly 700 kilometers. I was about uh, 20 days in. Physically, mentally, absolutely frazzled, but I was on it um, and I got hit with, uh, with pretty crap weather. Um, the snow conditions deteriorated around that particular period of the route and I knew that was expected. Uh, uh, and I was in quite a heavy sastrugi zone, which is basically the shapes that are carved into the ice and, and snow that's deposited into the ice that creates these big kind of ice sculptures, they're called sastrugi. And this particular zone or area, they were anything from a metre high to, you know, as high as a, 
a transit van, so it was over them, around them, you know, um, and it made life physically hard on the skis. Um, I had zero visibility, uh, so we had, well, I had flat light for, for, for three days, which meant I couldn't see anything, so no contrast, no horizon, uh, no shadow, so I, I didn't know where I was putting my foot or my ski, and this cold snap, so minus 45 wind chill, and that basically ground me to a halt. Um, you know, I can move in flat light, I can move in cold, I can move in sastrugi, but that kind of perfect kind of equation of all three happening at the same time meant my daily distances dropped from just under 50K down to about 15K. And it was then that I realized that the 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 world record that I know I'm capable of beating and I was beating um, slipped away from me. And that really kind of, uh, challenge my my kind of resilience and my 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 determination because i uh every part of me wanted to just quit at that point every part of me wanted to give up and go home i couldn't really figure out why i was there um but the project was always about something bigger than me um it always was that's not a cliche that's what gets me up in the morning that's what got me to training at nyack that's what powers the last two years, two and a half years, and really wanting a win for everyone involved and wanting to finish the project successfully is what kind of got me through that. And that was a real grind, really, really tough four or five days. Uh, to add to that, uh, I had to ration my food, um, which meant I went from 7,000 calories down to 2,000 calories a day, um, but still skiing 16, 19 hours a day. That last, um, that last six days of the expert was probably the hardest six days of my life, um, and I really mean that, but it's funny how quickly we forget the bad times, because the second I arrived at the pole, I, uh, well, after a little, a little, after a little cry, a little tear into my Welsh flag, uh, actually I was, um, I genuinely felt joy and genuinely felt elation, and it's kind of, it's funny how quickly we forget the bad times.